welcome to Charlotte, North Carolina for the NFL on Fox with a rematch of last season's NFC Championship game between the Carolina Panthers and the Arizona Cardinals. Good afternoon, everyone. What a great day here in Charlotte. 78 degrees, beautiful sunshine, just a little bit of a breeze. What a day, Daryl. And what a warm. match up here. A little warm for late October <laughs> for me, Sam. <laughs> A rematch of these two teams. Ron Rivera's team coming off a bye. Last week, they're one in five. Bruce Arians and the Arizona Cardinals. That tough five-quarter game, the overtime tie with Seattle Sunday night. A very physical game, uh, mentally and physically draining for the Arizona Cardinals. Ends in the tie. Now they've got to travel across the country. It's a little bit warmer here today. They changed up the practice week for the offense. Not a whole lot on Wednesday, kind of a half-day Thursday. Tried to hit their stride Friday before they came east. So it'll be interesting with a big physical game, the way they played Sunday night, and the warmth that we have here in Charlotte today, how they handle the fatigue. Graham Gano kicks off for Carolina. The Cardinals won the toss elected to receive. The football through the end zone for a touchback. And Carson Palmer leads his team onto the field. The number one overall pick in 2003, a Heisman Trophy winner. And you see his career record. Last year had a great season. This year, still trying to find his way a little bit. Yeah, I think defensively, Arizona's playing very well right now. They need a little bit of growth offensively. The big play down the field, the pass play down the field, Carson Palmer in control. They had a key to their offense last season. Not so much this year. Kind of sliding towards David Johnson being the guy for the offense. They bunch three receivers. Ryan Palmer. All the blitz was picked up to throw is to Larry Fitzgerald. Against nine, big play. Luke Keekley was, or uh, Thomas Davis was blitzing on first down. And there's that offensive line up front. Just a great game last Sunday night against a very talented defense of the Seattle Seahawks. They've got another one today. They've got to cover up this big athletic defensive front. Give David Johnson some opportunities to run the ball. I really think as they're moving in the direction that they are right now, the way David Johnson goes is the way this offense goes. Charles Johnson, excuse me, came on short. The defensive tackle blew in to make the tackle for a loss. And there's that defensive line we talked about. Big, athletic, inside and out. Coney Ely coming off the edge. Going to be tough duty for these guys to keep them blocked. Carolina was hoping to get some guys back, mainly James Bradbury at the corner. He's not back. Darrell Worley gets the start, but Robert McClain is back from the lineup. Third and three for Arizona. The 32. Russell Palmer is blitzed on the play, got rid of it, completes to the tight end Jermaine Grisham, and Grisham's got a first down up at the 39-yard line. Sometimes the most difficult first down in the game, Sam, is that first first down. So that's a good start by Arizona, and we talk about this all the time. There's a shift in the NFL. Everybody wants to come out and play defense first. So you see a lot of teams win the toss and defer. Arizona's one of those teams, even as good as their defense is playing right now, they want to get their offense out there, get Carson Palmer comfortable right away. On first down, it's David Johnson. He was stopped again short of the line of scrimmage. Great work up front. This time Kyle Love, the defensive tackle, busts in and makes the stop. And there's not a whole lot of running room up front yet early in this game and this is a very good front you know, we talked to aq shipley about carolina's front and said is it similar to seattle and he said no seattle's based more on speed this is a big athletic defensive front similar to the jets but in his mind better than the jets which is a big statement for a carolina defense three wide receivers in for arizona in motion john brown carson palmer being rushed on the play the pass Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald, who just goes on and on and on, has caught a pass in 187 consecutive games. Yeah, now we're getting a little stunts. So you're going to have Kyle Love up the field, and then here comes it underneath, and you get a clean run. Mario Addison with a clean run at Carson Palmer. Grabbed by Larry Fitzgerald, and a hit on Carson Palmer by Mario Addison. 
Another third down play, third and six. Palmer being pressured, and he shoveled it ahead. And it's picked up, play is continuing, and it's carried into the end zone. Thomas Davis carries it in, I think. The Cardinals thought it was an incomplete pass. Davis picked up the ball and ran it into the end zone. Well, it's a smart play by Thomas Davis. There are no whistles. And one of the things that you always hear when you're playing athletics is play to the whistle. Didn't really hear anything. So let's see what happens right at the end of this. His star Latulave gets the hit on Carson Palmer. Is that going to be considered a forward pass and an incomplete? Or is that a fumble that Thomas Davis scoops and scores? It sure looks like Carson Palmer kind of directed that ball out and then it didn't come free on its own. Ball plays. There's David Johnson, number 31, in the area. All turnovers are reviewed, so that play will be reviewed. But the ruling on the field is a fumble. And a touchdown. Now the wait is on, the nervous wait for Arizona. Fans are cheering. They see a replay on the video board. Bruce Arians calls a timeout. And uh, they are lined up for the extra point, so the play is confirmed. It's a fumble and a recovery return for a touchdown by Thomas Davis. And I think Arizona is stunned by the start of this game. Mike Pereira is with us back in our studio in L.A. Mike, what did you see? What do you think of the call? Well, I'll tell you what. I thought that he had actually shoved the ball forward in one of these shuffle passes to me, throwing it forward. I, certainly close enough to review, but looking at it as we did from all the angles here, looked to us like it was a pass. I agree right there. You can see the the intent by Carson Palmer. Now watch there's David Johnson. He's going to come into your screen from the left. So he's in the area and it actually kind of deflected off of Mario Addison when when as Mike said he went to do that shovel pass forward. So. It looked like he pushed the ball out. But the ruling on the field was fumble. And it stands. And the Carolina Panthers in a, in a manner that they started the NFC Championship game. They burst into the lead and never gave it up and ran away with the game over Arizona. And here, Thomas Davis with his first career touchdown. Getting a pat on the back from head coach Ron Rivera. That may be the most surprising thing of that play, that that's Thomas Davis's first touchdown. As athletic as he is at the linebacker position, I can't believe that's his first touchdown. Bam Godot kicks it off again and again. This time for the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Arizona will go back on offense, only this time trailing 7-0. Let's see how they handle the adversity. That's a big turn of events. Get the opening kickoff, and then suddenly you find yourself trailing seven to nothing. Well, we talked about you know getting that first first down, and, and maybe Carolina is going to get into a rhythm. But but credit Ron Rivera and the Panthers. One thing everybody has talked about with this defense is the play of the back end. They've had the injuries there. They didn't bring Josh Norman back. Is that the Achilles heels of the defense right now? Is that why we're not playing well? You have to couple that with the pressure up front. They were not getting the pressure up front like they did last season. They have opened this game harassing Carson Palmer virtually every snap. On ground motions, three receivers in, the handoff, and David Johnson. They are keying on David Johnson. He just can't get started. Right now, this is kind of what you see. We talked about the physical nature of that game on Sunday night against Seattle. And Carolina's coming off the bye. It, this Cardinal offense needs to wake up. Uh, they, are, they are playing a step slower than Carolina right now. Carolina is absolutely dominating the line of scrimmage. Three runs by David Johnson, all for negative yardage. Second and 11. Two tight ends in. Afani Moba, number 80, is in a tight end. And the pass is to Larry Fitzgerald, and he dropped it. Something you don't often see. 
Yeah, that, that's uh, that's a bad omen for Cardinal fans right now. Uh, this is very rare. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald has some of the best hands, not only the game today, but at the wide receiver position to, to anybody who's ever played in the NFL. And you, you don't see Larry drop any balls open like that. Third and 11 from the 24. Cardinals with three receivers in. David Johnson, an outstanding receiver in the backfield. Pressure, and they got him. Luke Keekley, the middle linebacker with his sack on Carson Palmer. Boy, they are giving them fits with movement up front, and we're going to have, you know, loops into this way. Here's Luke Keekley right here. He's going to come to this side. So this is, they, they just got the front. The offensive line of Carolina is just being overwhelmed right now with twists up front, with the speed they're playing at. The Arizona offensive line. Yes, yes. Yeah. And again, fair catch at the 41-yard line. All right. As we uh, thank them in London for uh, sending it to us here in Carolina, Sam Rosen along with Darrell Johnston. Laura Oakland's down on the field, and what a wild start. And again, for Carolina, tough start to the game, or rather for Arizona, tough start to the game on the road here in Carolina. Yeah, and it was going to be a tough task. We've already talked about, you know, how physical that game was in Seattle on Sunday night, then traveling to the East Coast. They've struggled a little bit on the East Coast the last few trips. They come out, they get that first first down, but now everything's kind of going south on them. Carolina coming off the bye fresh, ready to play this game. They, they have dominated the line of scrimmage up until this point right now. Cam Newton. Starts in the shotgun. With Jonathan Stewart in the backfield. It's Stewart on the carry. Usually their MO is that first play handoff to Jonathan Stewart. Well, one of the things that's been consistent for this Carolina offense is the play of Greg Olson. And you talk about the size and the matchup challenges that this group right here faces to you when you talk about Kelvin Benjamin, Devin Funches, Ted Gitt Jr. Greg Olson, they're all big physical guys, but, but he has been the most consistent guy for this Carolina offense through the start of the season. Tyler Larson, number 69, is in as a tight end. And it's Stewart again, flying on the play. He gets a couple of yards up to the 47-yard line. We'll check out the flag. Carolina, one and five. Boy, it's been a struggle for them. What a turnaround after playing in the Super Bowl. And looking forward to a little motion on the offense. Number 17 coming up, number 88. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And the penalty explained to the head coach, Ron Rivera. Devin Funches coming to the sideline, the man who covered up the tight end. Ball back just close to the 40 yard line. It'll be a second and 10 and 11. Kelvin Benjamin being covered one-on-one -on -one by Patrick Peterson. That's a good matchup. And off to Stewart. Trying to find some room, and he does. Flag on the play, gets up close to midfield. Another flag comes in. Two flags, one in the middle of the field, one along the sideline. Walt Coleman is our referee. 28 years in the NFL, 22 as a referee. We have two fouls on the offense. Illegal block at the back, number 13. That penalty is the clock. Holding, number 74, offense. That penalty will be 70. 10-yard penalty, still second down. Mike Remmers, who is the left tackle on the hole. Well, this is Kelvin Benjamin, so that's going to be your block in the back. Here's going to be your hold up here at the top with Mike Remmers, and that comes back into frame. You just got to finish your block. You know, you get yourself in that position, and the play bounces outside. You're not using the right technique. You let your guy go. You have a tendency to, to commit a foul at that point. Remmers, normally the starting right tackle, has been shifted the last couple of weeks to left tackle with Michael Orr out with a concussion. And still no word on how close he is to coming back. He hasn't practiced. And Newton puts it up through the hands of Kelvin Benjamin, falling incomplete. And once again, Patrick Peterson 
was covering on the play along with D.J. Swearinger. Yeah, there is a, a very unique style of defense that the Cardinals play, and they've got this group of guys, Tyron Matthew, Tony Jefferson, Dayon Buchanan, and add to that, D.J. Swearinger. He has come in here to Arizona, and I tell you, you watch the film of the Cardinals' defense, and, and he just continues to pop out. He's become quite a playmaker on that back end. Third and 21, Fosse Whitaker is the running back. And Greg Olson lining up at the backfield. Newton with time, but nobody open. Now they're chasing him, and they got him. Excellent play by the Kareem Martin. There's James Betcher, the defensive coordinator. He's excited. The, the duty with Cam Newton is you got to have eyes on him. And you can see right there, Kareem Martin, number 96, not fully engaged in the rush, kind of playing a little bit of a spy technique. James Betcher will have one player designated to keep eyes on Cam Newton on every single snap. It can be an interior lineman, it can be one of your ends, it could be a linebacker, it could be a safety, but he will always have somebody with eyes on the quarterback. Ryan quickly back to punt for Carolina. Good high kick. Excuse me, that's Andy Lee. My apologies. That's Britton Golden on the return. Gets a couple of yards across the 20-yard line. And the Arizona Cardinals will go on offense, and we check in to the sideline to Laura Oakman. Hi, Sam. You guys welcomed everyone in by talking about how this was an NFC Championship rematch. I'm not going to tell Ron Rivera you said it because he didn't want his guys thinking about that game last year, last week. He reset the button this week, saying when the team came back from the bye, I don't want you to think about what you have to do, but what do you want to do? Cam Newton didn't hesitate when I asked him, what do you want, saying, I don't want to let anyone down in that huddle. 6-0 and can seem easy, but we're going to look back at this and say, 1-5, and what did we do? Thanks, Laura. Hope Laura brought her sunscreen today. Carson Palmer on first down and finds a man. And it's complete up to J.J. Nelson. Nelson had a big catch in overtime Sunday night, a 40-yarder. But still, this Carolina defensive line continues to get pressure on Carson Palmer. Again, here comes a twist. It's Charles Johnson going inside. So these twists inside giving that offensive line some issues. And, and here's an area. What, what a great throw by Carson. Mm. There's four defenders around yep. J.J. Nelson. He, he just finds that opening and drops it in. 18-yard gain up to the 40-yard line. Empty backfield. All receivers out. Palmer. Bart bought some time, finds a man that's complete to Michael Floyd, but there's a flag down in the backfield. Looks like holding on Arizona. Holding, number 74, offense. 10-yard penalty, still first down. The right tackle, D.J. Humphreys, called for the hold. It's a... Uh... Pressure broke down. You can see right there a, a good initial charge by Charles Johnson. You get that hook and that hands get up on top of that shoulder pad. Ball back to the. Should be at the 30 yard line. Set it down for 32. Now they move it back to the 30. First and 20. For Arizona Cardinals with a 7-0 lead on a fumble by Carson Palmer, recovered by Thomas Davis, and run in 46 yards for a touchdown. Palmer with time. Fires tipped away. Luke Keekley came over. Both linebackers were back deep. Keekley and Thomas Davis. Yeah, but they're, they're always up involved with the line of scrimmage. 59 is going to be up in that line of scrimmage. There goes the loop inside. There's Thomas Davis dropping in, and there comes Luke Keekley across. Just a real athletic play, getting a hand on that football, because he and Thomas Davis, they're walked up into the A-gaps, up into that line, dropping in and out, really giving Carson Palmer a number of different looks to think about pre-snap. Remain Gresham, the tight end, the intended receiver. Second and 20 for the Cardinals. Off the play fake. Here comes the rush. Palmer got rid of it. And incomplete, Mario Addison. Boy, every play, somebody's in the face of Carson Palmer. Yeah, and it looks like right now they may be debating whether that was intentional grounding. They just dropped the flag. Now, I'm going to drop this one on Michael Floyd because, yeah, again, Carson Palmer is under pressure. Mario Addison free. That ball is thrown. 
and I'm not going to put that on Carson Palmer. I'm putting that on Michael Floyd. He broke in. Carson threw the ball to the outside. So a big loss of down on the play, loss of yardage as well. To watch at the top of this route, Michael Floyd is going to break to the inside, and the ball is thrown outside. So with no intended receiver in the area, they're able to throw the flag for intentional grounding on Carson Palmer. So the series which started on the 40 is now back to the 20. Third and 30. All receivers out. Palmer being rushed again. Waits, throws, and completes the Gresham, the tight end. And still on his feet. Buys a couple more yards and then slams the ball down as he shoved out of bounds at around the 40-yard line. Obviously going to be difficult to convert a third and 30, but you do want to get a little bit of a chunk right here to let your punt team come out and try and flip the field a little bit. You have not been playing well offensively. Let's get this team backed up, get your defense back on the field, and see if we can create some field position. Arizona without tight end Darren Fells, who's inactive today, so pressure becomes a very important man. Punt by Quigley. Not a great punt. Is inside the 30 goes out of bounds around the 25-yard line. So the Carolina Panthers go on offense for the second time. 36-yard punt. Again, we had that fumble by Carson Palmer, but we thought it looked like an attempted forward pass. But the play stand as called here in the game. So Thomas Davis, which, again, I think is the most surprising, surprising. thing of that play. I, I would have thought Thomas had more touchdowns. Uh, that, it's amazing that that's his first one. He's such an athletic linebacker. He's always around the football. Greg Olson, the tight end. Corey Brown and Kelvin Benjamin, the wideouts. Jonathan Stewart in the backfield with Cam Newton. Stewart takes the handoff. Gets a couple of yards. Tough to run against this Arizona front. Well, James Betcher, the defensive coordinator, that was his number one message to his guys. You know, we've got to stop Jonathan Stewart. And, and he's well aware of what, uh, what happened to him in the championship last year. 152 yards rushing. A big part of that was Jonathan Stewart. You go back to the wild card round the year before in the playoffs when Arizona lost to Carolina. They went for 188 yards running the football. So the running game is key for this Cardinal defense to stop. They get him a yard on the last play, second and nine. At the 26, Mike Colbert's in at fullback. Newton throws and completes to Ted Ginn Jr. Shoved hard out of bounds, but he's got a first down up at the 36. Let's find out about that London game, and for that, let's go to Carissa Thompson. Yeah, Sam, how about this one? Washington, Cincinnati, just over two minutes to go. Redskins looking to win an OT. Dustin Hopkins makes the first one, but is iced by Marvin Lewis, and he misses the second one. Wide left, all tied up. Bengals ball, Sam. Wow, we're going to have another tie? <laughs> yeah. That's a very good in a row. Week. Good play fake by Cam Newton. Completes to Devin Funches. Good fake by Cam. We talked a lot this week about continuing to run. People worried about him taking too many hits, but he said running. The football gives me and the team an edge. Yeah, that's what separates him from everybody else between the tackles. But we'll keep an eye on it during the course of the game, but I think what really happens, this run game stresses this defense. You saw that play action on the last pass. On first down, Newton throws and completes it. Punches, breaks away, and is pulled down at the Arizona 30. They've got big receivers that are tough to handle. They really do. And when you've got Patrick Peterson on the opposite side, Marcus Cooper has to be ready for a big day today. You know, Cam Newton is going to make him play football on the corner. And if I've got Patrick Peterson on one side, I'm going away from him the same way Cam is doing right now. He's been throwing at Marcus Cooper here to start the game. Ball down to the Arizona 30, first down. A pickup of 22 on the last play. Fossey Whitaker in at running back. Goes short, it's dropped by Ted Jen. You can just see the difference in the protection between the two offenses right now. We've seen Carson Palmer under duress 
all afternoon. Watch this job by the Carolina offensive line. You got the rushers coming in. You're trying to add a few people, and it's a clean pocket. Cam Newton's able to stand in there, feel confident, feel comfortable to deliver the ball down the field. Here's second and ten. Carolina coming off their bye week. Ron Rivera told his players, get away from football. Don't think football for a few days. Come back. Had a good week of practice. And here's Newton on the quarterback draw. Still on his feet. Inside the 20. Out of bounds. At about the 11-yard line. 19-yard run by Cam Newton. And this is the thing you have to guard against. These are called quarterback runs. When you get near the red zone, watch for the called quarterback run. You know it is because watch Ryan Khalil. He's going downfield to chop linebackers. So what this offense forces defenses to do is when you get into the red zone, play 11 versus 11. And a stand-up quarterback offense at Tom Brady, Tom Brady's going to hand that ball off. You're playing 10 against 11 offensively when you get into the red zone. Cam Newton adds that extra guy. It's it's a balanced, fair fight down in the red zone. Ryan Khalil has gone to the sideline. Looks like an equipment issue, maybe an arm issue. Gino Gradkowski's in at center. And they throw outside to Stewart, who's upended inside the 10 and is down about the six-yard line. Marcus Cooper on the tackle. So we just saw a called quarterback run right up the middle of the field. Now you've got misdirection option. There's the ride to Mike Tolbert, the quick flip out to Jonathan Stewart. This running game makes you defend the entire perimeter of the field. Ryan Khalil is back in at center. They fix the problem. And Cam Newton works out of the shotgun on second and five. Newton for running. Barrels close to the first down. Corey Peters in on the stop. Looks like he might be just a little bit short of the first down. And I think he does a really good job when his running of the football. And, you know, you go, you watch Russell Wilson, you watch some of these other athletic quarterbacks play. And Cam is that same way. He's bigger, he's a little bit more physical, but, but he goes head first. He doesn't slide a lot, but he's very protective. He does it in a way where he's not exposing himself to a bunch of hits. Chris Scott. A guard is number 79 is in as an eligible. Stewart carries into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. Two-yard touchdown run for Jonathan Stewart. I mean, just a sample of that offense coming into the red zone. The called quarterback run to Cam Newton. The option with a quick, quick flip to Jonathan Stewart. Now we're just straight power football. Get in behind your fullback, Mike Tolbert, and just pound that ball into the end zone. Carolina just forces you to do so many things defensively to try to stop their running game. It's hard on a defense. Yeah, nice little dancing. Very nice. Extra point try by Graham Gano. Danny Lee, the holder. And the kick is good. And Carolina with a defense scoring seven, the offense scoring seven. They have a 14 to nothing lead on the Arizona Cardinals. And this is bringing back, it may be bringing back, scary memories of last January in the game here for the NFC Championship. It was a nightmare for Carolina. It was trick, uh, rather for Arizona, it was trick or treat for Carolina. Carolina went on to the Super Bowl. And Arizona came up a little bit short. Bruce Arians team right now at 3-3-1. Three, three and one. They have a bye next week. They would love to go into the bye with a win and be 4-3-1 and 3-0-1 and and one in their last four games. Yeah, well, they felt like they got some things turned around and real happy with the way they played against Seattle. Not happy with the outcome, obviously, but offensively put up some great numbers. Defensively, one of the best defensive performance I've seen in the last couple of years by a team. But, but right now, I mean, you're looking at almost an identical situation to what they had in that championship yeah. game. The nightmare that we just saw was 17-0 Carolina end of first quarter in the championship game. It's 14-0 right now with 2.24 left. So uh, just, a, just a tough start again for the, for the Cardinals on the road. 
strong leg by Graham Gano. This one nine yards deep in the end zone. And a touchback. Carolina, slow starting team. It's a team that scored only seven points in the first quarter all season. Well, it has not been a good start again today. Uh, I mean, you got the fumble return for the touchdown. And minus nine yards on the next series with a punt. It just, it, it hasn't gone right. You had some penalties on that third possession. Yeah. They stared at a third and 30 at one point in that series. So, uh, yeah, it's just a, just a rough start for this Cardinals offense. From the 25. Here's David Johnson. And he finds an opening. Burst through and gets up close to the 35-yard line. David Johnson, second-year man out of Northern Iowa, is currently the second-leading rusher in the NFL and the leader in yards from scrimmage in the NFL. Yeah, and just one of those guys who I really enjoy watching run the football. And it was funny when we talked to him on Saturday, one of the guys he mentioned he enjoyed to watch was Matt Forte. And Matt Forte is one of the guys that really kind of takes me back to Gale, to Gale Sayers. Kind of that smooth sliding footwork that they have. You'll see a lot of that with David Johnson as you watch him run. There's Johnson looking for the opening. Just tripped up, but he got a first down on the play. Darrell Worley, the cornerback, took him out. You talked about what David Johnson has done with the leading the NFL in yards from scrimmage. And, and look at the company that, that he's holding right here, being over 1,000 at this stage of the game. There's one of the guys he looks up to right there, Matt Forte. And he's got 1,004 this year to start. So third round draft pick, you know, everybody, well, how does a guy like that last till the third round? Uh, I don't know. He was overlooked coming out of high school, overlooked coming out of college. But you sit down and talk to him. He's a heck of a young man. This time he's dropped for a loss, Shaq Thompson. He doesn't get all that much recognition the way Keekly and Thomas Davis does, but uh, he's pretty good. Well, he's one of those unique guys. You know, what, what really is Shaq Thompson? Is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? Is he a nickelback? He's, he's another one of these hybrid players coming into the league that gives Sean McDermott, the defensive coordinators for the Panthers, so many options on defense because he can do so many different things athletically. That's the fourth negative run of the game. David Johnson and the Arizona Cardinals. Carson Palmer throws short, completes it. Larry Fitzgerald brought down at the 40-yard line. There's a flag on the play back to the 30. Holding, number 76, offense. 10-yard penalty, second down. Cardinals are shooting themselves in the foot here, Darrell. They really are. The one thing you can't do when you're on the road is beat yourself. And right now with these penalties, the fumble that was returned for the touchdown, regardless of what we think of the call, uh, that's the way the game rolled and played out. Uh, you've got to get this ship righted right now because you're exactly right, Sam. They just continue to shoot themselves in the foot on every possession. Now they make a play, gain some yardage, and then get thrown back. Ball back at the 24. Second and 22. Carson Palmer swings it out to David Johnson. His 29th reception of the season. Flag on the play. Dropped where David Johnson was taken down. Old Coleman. Hey. Illegal block in the back. Number 68. Offense. That penalty's declined. The left tackle, Jared Veldier, the man called for the illegal block in the back. That is declined. And we've come to the end of the first quarter. And this rematch of NFC Championship teams of last season. Right now, Carolina owning the game. We welcome everyone to Charlotte, North Carolina. Sam Rose and Daryl Johnson, Laura Oakman. Glad you're with us. Start of the second quarter. Carson Palmer on third down. Being rushed, throws, and the pass broken up. Good job by Leonard Johnson, who's just back from a non-football injury. He had been on, on the sidelines, and now he's back in and starting at the nickel corner, and he broke up that pass play. Uh, I just don't like the decision by Carson Palmer right there. You're being flushed out to the right, on the move, throwing back into the middle of the field. Very lucky that that was not intercepted. 
And for those of you just joining us, Carolina with a 14-0 lead, scoring a touchdown on a recovered fumble by Carson Palmer. Punt grabbed by Ted Ginn Jr. He goes out of bounds at the Carolina 35-yard line. They had one blocked Sunday night against Seattle. They almost had another one blocked here this afternoon. Joe Webb right up the middle. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Nabisco's 115th anniversary celebration by Papa John's, the official pizza sponsor of the NFL and by PlayStation. Carolina with a 14-0 lead and their largest since week two for Arizona, largest deficit since the game at Buffalo. You had that game at Buffalo. You saw Arizona, Daryl. Anything to the these games, these 1 o'clock Eastern start games? Well, they'll, they'll try and tell you there's not, but, I mean, you had Buffalo earlier this year, Pittsburgh and Cleveland last year. They all look the same. Newton throws and completes to Kelvin Benjamin. Keep, he keeps going down to the 15-yard line. The big receiver, tough to handle. And we always talk about pass protection. We've been focusing on the offensive line to start, but it's communication with tight ends and running backs. And watch the job here. Jonathan Stewart, we talk about him as a rusher. That's Calais Campbell, one of the, the biggest defensive linemen in the NFL. That gives you the time to make the throw down the field. Kelvin Benjamin turns around Patrick Peterson a little bit on that one. 50-yard pass play. Cam Newton to Kelvin Benjamin. First down, Panthers. At the 15, three wide receivers to the left. And they motion Fozzie Whitaker. Newton's got the football. Newton to the 11 yard line. Three rushes in the game already for Cam Newton. See, this is what I'm talking about with Cam running the football. He's not real happy. He feels like he took a late hit because he does run smart. Watch how he finishes the run. We see a lot of quarterbacks slide. I don't think he's ever going to slide. But he gets down, he gets low, and he gets his head down. Now, he's forfeited all his protection. He has become a runner. And DJ Swearinger, that is a legal hit. That's the one thing that Cam will have to deal with. He's already committed. He can't go to the head, neck, shoulder area, which he did not. But he put a big hit on Cam. Offensive coordinator Mike Shula said Cam didn't play baseball. Never learned how to slide. <laughs> he doesn't. He goes ahead. <laughs> he's that new state. He's sliding head first. Timeout. Team timeout. Carolina. Carolina. We're early second quarter, and Carolina with a 14-0 lead, and Cam Newton is smiling with good reason to this point. Well, it's, it's been a big topic of discussion in the NFL since opening week against Denver, and here's some of those big hits. You know, he'll stand up, he'll take him. He's 255 pounds. There's the mesh point. You know, teams now attacking that mesh point to get a hit on Cam Newton. Here's another called quarterback run. You got to finish it, though. This is the one thing that he will say. That that's on me. He goes, I never should have finished that play that that way. He goes, what I learned from there is there's talented guys all over the field, and I can't see all 11, and I've got to finish that into the end zone and not be one of those guys that gets a little careless, maybe a little bit showboaty at the end. Just get in and be safe. But you can kind of see the different elements there. Yeah. There's a little turf there, a little grass there. Worked on Cam's helmet. And usually if you're you're cleaning the, the sod out of a quarterback's helmet, it's been a bad play. It's a sack or something like that with Cam. It's, it's usually a nice plus yardage run. Second and six at the 11 yard line. Jonathan Stewart in the backfield. With Cam Newton, all receivers out. Newton throws for Stewart off his hands. Just a little too far. Well, that's just Cam having to adjust. You talk, we got Greg Olson, 6'5", Kelvin Benjamin, 6'5", 6'6", all these guys. Oh, oh, that's right, that's 28. That's Jonathan Stewart coming out of the backfield. He's not quite as tall as those guys. Brings up a third down. There's the leaping try by Jonathan Stewart just off his fingertips. Cam Newton, four for seven, 94 yards. Three rushes for 26 yards. And another Carolina timeout. Yeah, they could not get the right personnel in there. Uh, that play was uh, not going to work. Good timeout by the Panthers right there. Carolina Panthers with a 14-point lead and a third and six at the Arizona 11. Two tight ends in for Carolina, Olsen and Dixon. They brought in... Brenton Burson 
at wide receiver, and Mike Tolbert is in the backfield with Cam Newton. And they stop the play. False start. Carolina. Mm. Red zone penalties, especially pre-snap. Pre-snap anywhere on the field. Full but start, number 13, offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Yeah, we're having a couple here. We've had some illegal formation. We've had some false starts. A uh, little sloppy right here, uh, Carolina offensively. Right at the top of the bunch, you'll see Calvin, the big guy there, just a little flinch. Doesn't Good. take a whole lot. Back to third and 11 as head coach Ron Rivera looks on his team in scoring position. Same personnel, three receivers bunched to the left. Newton throwing, leaping grab by Greg Olson. Did he get both feet down? The officials looked and rolled a catch. And inside the five. Just a quick little speed cut out. Let's see possession. I don't know if that that left foot ever touched the ground. It looked like it was coming down, but it doesn't look like it ever made contact with the ground. Right now, it is ruled a first down inside the five yeah. for Carolina. No flag, no challenge by Arizona. Tolbert carries on first down, not much. It's funny because we saw a play last year with Odell Beckham Jr. in the end zone for the Giants. And it's all about getting that second foot down. So it's possession two feet down. So there's possession. Now watch that left foot. That left foot never really comes down. It looks like it's going to touch. But then he flexes it up. The right foot comes down. And then his hand is out of bounds with only one foot down. So Arizona misses an opportunity on a challenge to Fishers. force Carolina to kick the field goal. The officials must have felt that, foot, that left foot scrape the grass. Second and goal at the five-yard line. Jonathan Stewart back in at running back. Greg Olson motions. Cam Newton holds on to it, gets down to the one-yard line. Well, he says his edge is running between the tackles. And I think it's really, you know, in fact, once you get down to this part of the field, when you're in the red zone, again, you've got 11 on 11 now. And it's just a different mentality for the defense. If it's a traditional pocket passing quarterback, it's really 11 on 10 for the defense. But when you add Cam Newton down here and his ability to run and stress that defense, it's 11 on 11. Kevin Minter made the tackle, stopping Cam short of the goal line. A little over a yard to go. On third down, Stewart is hit, barrels his way into the end zone. He would not be stopped. Well, right there, in my opinion, right now, at this point in the game, this is why Carolina is going to go up 21-0. Watch this run by Jonathan Stewart. Watch how many tacklers he runs through. This should be stuffed right here. This is a good defense. That's D.J. Swearinger. D.J. Swearinger is one of the more physical guys in the league. And I just, I'm not seeing the energy and the passion that we saw Sunday night against Seattle from this defense. A lot, the big feeling is that all that play, defense was on the field for over 90 plays, may have taken a lot out of them. And we're still seeing the residual effects. Extra point try by Graham Gano is good. It's all Carolina. Little over 11 minutes to go in the first half. Panthers with a 21-0 lead. This game is sponsored by the all-new 2017 Ford Super Duty. This is the next level. Seven-play, 65-yard drive. Jonathan Stewart, second time in his career. He scored two first-half touchdowns. And he missed three games with injury. And they missed him badly. He really, yeah, we talk about Cam Newton being the focal point, but this man is almost as important as Cam Newton. Well, Cam's contributions in the run game come off the threat of Jonathan Stewart. He adds that dimension uh, in that option game, that zone read, the, the gap schemes that Carolina runs. Uh, Jonathan Stewart makes that element go, and then Cam is able to play off of that. On the return, Andre Ellington. 
comes up short of the 15 yard line. Good coverage by the Panthers. Well, this is why it was such a disappointing tie for Arizona last week. You look at some of these numbers that they put up offensively and were only able to muster the six points, three in regulation, three in overtime. And that's why, you know, Larry Fitzgerald told us, listen, we've got to capitalize on our possessions. We've got to turn possessions into points. Well, well right now, they're, they're not playing anywhere close to the way they played Sunday night. And, and the two areas that they played really well in, offensive line and defensively, have come out and struggled here at the start of the game against Carolina. And game against Seattle, they got down to the one-yard line in overtime. And David Johnson had the run after the long pass to J.J. Nelson. They start from the 14. Carson Palmer being rushed. Down he goes. That time it was Worley, Daryl Worley, the rookie cornerback, coming from the outside. They got a player down for Carolina. But he's going to come off screen from the left right here. And this is one of the things that we're seeing here today from defensive coordinator Sean McDermott. He's become a little bit more aggressive with what he's doing. Shaq Thompson is the injured player down on the field for Carolina. Third sack of the game for the Panthers on Carson Palmer. We'll be right back. Shaq Thompson, first round draft pick out of Washington in 2015 for the sideline with a leg issue. The good news is, yeah, his own exactly. Power. He's able to walk off. Arizona pushed back to their seven yard line, second and 17. Palmer in the end zone. Did he get out of the end zone? Yes, just fell forward out of the end zone. Otherwise, it would have been a safety. Star Latulale with the sack. Four sacks in the game for Carolina. Yeah, he he's just has no time in the pocket. He's easy at breaking down. You can see Carson Palmer. That's a heady play by a veteran quarterback. Get that ball forward. Get it out of the end zone. Don't give up the safety. Now, just has it doesn't has to come all the way out. It's not like going in. You know, Carson's got to get that football all the way out to prevent that safety. The ball is at the one yard line. Quick outside to John Brown. And Brown is hit and knocked down at the seven yard line. And the punting unit comes on again for Arizona. The fresher team, Carolina, right now looking much fresher. Well, right, just in the preparation week, right? When you talk to the teams, Carolina has four weeks of practice, or four days of practice coming off the bye. One of them in pads. They go full pads on Wednesday. And Arizona's kind of scaling everything down because they're still tired from Sunday night. Ryan Quigley gets a good high punt away for a catch away for by Ted Ginn Jr. at the 40-yard line. Carolina defense doing their part. They've scored a touchdown and sacked Carson Palmer four times. Carolina Panthers with the ball in good field position at the 40-yard line. And this is exactly the way they hoped this game would play out. It, it couldn't have started any better for Carolina. Ron Rivera talked about the offense getting off to a quick start. The defense feeding off of that. Luke Keekley doesn't agree with that theory, but <laughs> he says the defense doesn't need any help getting started. And Newton on the handoff to Jonathan Stewart. Pushes the pile forward for a couple of yards. We go to Laura Oakman along the sideline for an update. Laura. Sam, you guys were talking about how this Cardinals defense hasn't been looking the same. This may not help. Tyron Matthew has been working so hard on coming back mentally and physically from his Achilles injury. He's in the locker room right now being treated with a shoulder injury. His return, however, is probable. Uh, I like the probable word was yesterday he's still a, a three weeks to maybe a month away from being back 100 percent quick outside to Corey Philly Brown and Philly Brown is brought down across the 45 yard line we check in with Carissa Thompson for a scoreboard update Carissa hi Sam here's your final in London Dustin Hopkins misses this 34 yard field goal in overtime the Redskins get the ball back with one last shot of the Hail Mary but unfortunately for Kirk Cousins and his team to no avail. It is a final of 27-27, the first back-to-back -back tie since 1997. <laughs> wow, thanks, Carissa. Yeah, Arizona can empathize. They went a long ways 
to play a tie. But you know what? They had a good ball game there at Wembley today. Yeah, they did. They did. That's the two good teams. Washington coming along. Cincinnati trying to get the, the ship righted there. But Ryan Khalil, Laura Oakman had told us earlier that Ryan Khalil had been having uh, his shoulder checked by the doctors along the sideline. And now Gino Gradkowski is out there. Lil shaken up the doctors checking him again. He'd gone to the sideline earlier. Radkowski has come into the game. Lil has to go to the sideline for at least one play. Yeah, he's your center, so keep an eye on the center pulling out and around the outside. And he really just there's not a lot there. And when something, you know, you get that much pain from very little contact, you you've definitely got something going on and Looks like he's heading straight into the locker room yeah. right now. That would be a huge loss. He is the anchor of that offensive line. Such an important position, the center. Ball just across the 45-yard line. Have to get to midfield for a first down. Gradkowski is a fifth-year man out of Delaware, formerly with the Atlanta Falcons. First year with Carolina. First down for Carolina. Let's check out Mr. Gradkowski and see how that first snap comes. <laughs> not uh, not as not as pure as you'd like it. <laughs> Cam Cam reacts. He's athletic. Good big hands. First down at the Arizona 49-yard line. Tight ends in Olsen and Ed Dixon, both to the left side. With time, throwing and complaining. That's the Fozzie Whitaker, the running back, out of the backfield. And Cam Newton using them all. And, and now they're just opening up their formation, taking Fozzie, putting him out here in that slot area, just running a simple out route. And Cam getting it out to him quick right there. This is uh, this is an offense that's working very efficiently this afternoon. Ball at the 40-yard line. Second and a yard. And it's Whitaker hit as he gets to the 40, short of the first down. That's a nice job right there, right at the point where you're, you're making your decision on that zone read. Where did the give or pull? And Arizona had it bottled up that time with Dayon Buchanan. He's an interesting guy, isn't he, the way he plays? He really is. You know, he's an undersized guy playing down in the box. You know, he's 6'1", you know, 210, 215-ish. But you, you watch him on film, and you think that sometimes maybe you can use that size to your advantage. But I tell you what, he is really stout in the run game. There's third and one for the Panthers. They motion Ed Dixon. Play fake. Cam Newton wants to go deep. Puts it up long for Greg Olson. And it's broken up. And did he come down with a football? Did Griffin and Tony Jefferson come down with it? Yes. Tony Jefferson with a great interception. Maybe that's something that can spark this Arizona team. They haven't had much go their way today. Cam Newton going for the big play over the top. You know, I don't think he got his second foot down. He got one foot down, but I don't think he got that second foot down to reestablish. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Yes, to little fans with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Looks like uh, the play will be reviewed. Mike Pereira, how do you see it? I see it as a defensive player who stepped out of bounds, and now he has to reestablish back in bounds with both feet before he touches the ball. All right, so let's get got... the... Sorry, Mike, go ahead. No, you've got... After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field has changed. The defender's right left foot was out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down at the 40-yard line. Please put six, 16 on the clock, please. Finish your thoughts, Mike. 
No issue of illegal touch here because all defensive players are eligible. It's only offensive players that, if they go out of bounds, can't be the first to uh, touch the pass. So it's a clear and complete pass on the right call and replay. Thank you, Mike. You roll over that, Dow. I remember from special teams, you know, with the end zone, you know, having to reestablish there. Uh, okay. but, you know, having Mike, you know, the one big thing is the offensive player, even when he reestablishes, can't be the first one, but the defensive player can. There's so. There's so many subtleties to the rules. I'm so happy we have Mike Pereira to lean on every <laughs> Sunday. Now, for Carolina, it's only a fourth and one. They went for it with the bomb on third down, and it winds up incomplete. They've got an extra lineman in. It's an eligible tight end. Jonathan Stewart, he's got enough for the first down. Down to the 36-yard line. I think sometimes in today's game we see, you know, these up-tempo offenses and empty backfields and three and four wide receiver sets. What we're seeing today is the line of scrimmage. Whoever wins the line of scrimmage is still very, very important. Carolina is dominating the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball right now. So the Panthers resume their drive. First down at the Cardinals 36-yard line. Wilson and Dixon, two tight ends in. Stewart on the carry. Broke one tackle. And fights he broke another tackle before he's brought down inside the 30. They own Buchanan, finished it off. Marcus Cooper had a chance to take him down earlier. Yeah, but watch this. You're going to have Marcus Cooper there, the outside blitz. Watch it. He's going to run right into it. Jonathan Stewart says, all right, I see your blitz coming. Guess what? I'm coming right at you. That's, that's just great eyes and great vision during the course of that cadence to see that blitz recognizes that the guys are out of position he takes advantage and runs right into that blitz by by the Arizona Cardinals in of seven second and three Colbert shifts back into the backfield Colbert and Stewart in the backfield with Camden Stewart behind Colbert and gets down to the 25 yard line another Carolina first down they got a couple of guys on this offense, Ed Dixon and Mike Tolbert, you know, just guys that do a lot of the dirty work. And there's 35, Mike Tolbert getting the end of the line shot, giving Jonathan Stewart a lot of area to work in that running game. But I, I just think they're underrated key guys when you talk about Ed Dixon at tight end, Mike, Mike Tolbert at fullback. They're very versatile guys. They allow Mike Shula to do a lot of different things with this offense. Right now, Carolina grinding it out. Billy Brown shifts. Into the backfield. Colbert on the carry. Down to the 22. Let's get an update from Carissa Thompson. Well, thanks, Sam. Detroit at Houston. Houston already up 7 nothing on the Lions in the red zone. Lamar Miller with the one-yard score. That's only the second rushing touchdown this season for the Texans. They tied with Green Bay for the fewest. So nice day so far for them. They're up 14 nothing. Sam? Thanks, we, Carissa. We all saw that one coming, right, Sam? We all saw Houston jumping out on Detroit. <laughs> Houston four and three going in Detroit rolling uh, and with a three game winning streak to come back. Jonathan Stewart stop the loss back to the 25 Tony Jefferson was blitzing on the play then he blew up the running play yeah that's it's just that group of guys I mean they're they're so good they're so athletic there's Tony Jefferson coming off the edge Mike Tolbert doesn't see it till too late, can't recognize it and get back in to help out. But we, Tony Jefferson, Tyron Matthew, who's out of the lineup right now, but they've added DJ Swearinger to that mix. Dayon Buchanan. I mean, th these guys are, they are so quick. They are always around the football. There's third and 10 for Carolina. Newton fakes being rushed, throws wide of Philly Brown. Pressure on Cam Newton from Calais Campbell. Now finally getting a little bit of pressure on Cam Newton, kind of pushing that pocket back. You see right here, James Batcher adding a lot of guys to that rush. Calais Campbell, Marcus Golden getting in. Graham Gano comes out for a field goal try of 43 yards. He's 9 for 12 this season. J.J. Jansen, the long snapper. Andy Lee is the holder. 43, it's good. And the Carolina Panthers add to the lead. It's 24 to nothing late in the first half.
Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. Here with your team on it. Carolina, 13 plays on that drive. Cashed in with a field goal, but grinding down Arizona. It has to be part of this equation today, and, and I'm sure Bruce Arians is going to say no, not at all. Uh, our guys are professional, but you talk about a physical football game. It's kind of a heartbreaking tie when you play that well and, and don't get a victory. Travel to the East Coast, play the 1 o'clock kick against the team coming off a bye. Those are all elements for a slow start, and, and Arizona has to do something. They've got to swing momentum their way here uh, near the end of the first half. They've got to get something positive to go into that locker room. There. Brenton Golden takes a knee, and Arizona will start from the 25. First five possessions, well, you had the fumble, which we thought, many thought, was a shovel pass, but it was ruled a fumble. They reviewed it, and it turned into a touchdown for Carolina. Then four punts since then. Yeah, nothing positive there. That, that's why this is a critical drive for the Arizona Cardinals, to be able to walk in the locker room and with something to build on, uh, because that those previous five possessions, there, there's nothing to build on there. David Johnson, one of the number two running back in the NFL, has been held to just six yards on six carries with four negative yardage carries. There's Palmer on first down, being rushed. Drops it off to David Johnson. Turns it into a nice gain up to the 40-yard line. But Luke Keekley came in on the blitz. Yeah, real nice job by Carson Palmer on that play, ad-libbing a little bit because Luke Keekley comes free. Here he comes right here. He's going to loop to the outside. He's going to get a free run right at Carson Palmer. A little shift. Flips it up to uh, David Johnson there for a nice game. Sean McDermott blitzing more for Carolina in this game? I think he is. I think he feels confident he can. That pass from Palmer to Larry Fitzgerald up to the 45-yard line. Pick up a five. Coming down to the two-minute warning. See if Carson Palmer gets a playoff here. He wants to, but he doesn't, can't do it. We've hit the two-minute warning in a game dominated thus far by the Carolina Panthers. It's 24 to nothing. Carolina, Arizona trying to get something started. Second and five for Arizona at their 45-yard line. Cardinals have all three of their timeouts remaining. Quick cross to Larry Fitzgerald, the first down into Carolina territory. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Carson Palmer, 10 for 14, 91 yards. Being rushed, and they got him. Helmet comes flying off, flag on the play. That was Leonard Johnson on the blitz. But he pulled the helmet of Carson Palmer off. Yeah, it, it's it's not just the face mask, it's the whole helmet. Personal foul on Nessary Rumpkins, number 23. Defense got a hold of the helmet opening and ripped the helmet off. Automatic first down. I just think he was a little bit surprised to get there, elevated, and just got his hands up there. I don't think the intent by Leonard Johnson, but, I mean, pre-snap, just Luke Keekley, you know, Carson Palmer identifies Leonard Johnson. There's a conversation between Luke Keekley and Leonard Johnson, and then one of them comes free. So, to have a guy like Luke Keekley at middle linebacker to go mentally toe-to-toe -to -toe with a guy like Carson Palmer is so important for your defense. He, he, he's a film rat. He's going to watch film, break down film. He's going to know what tendencies quarterbacks like. That, that was just a great job right there of, of switching their pressure to something else after he saw Carson Palmer move. There's first down Arizona at the Carolina 34. The motion the tight end Gresham. Palmer pulled it down. Now he throws deep for the end zone of J.J. Nelson. It's tipped away. Broken up by Darrell Worley, the rookie cornerback out of West Virginia. Well, it was the number one message by defensive coordinator Sean McDermott to his guys this week. We cannot allow anybody to get over the top. Arizona likes to throw the ball down the field. And this is a nice job by Darrell Worley. He plays it really well. He's got his eyes back on the quarterback. There's a little hand checking and everything, but you can see he's played it well. He's got his eyes back, looking at the quarterback, and then gets the deflection. Second and ten. For the Cardinals, they like J.J. Nelson. He's got a lot of speed and is a dangerous receiver. 
There's Palmer stepping up, throwing short to Larry Fitzgerald. Inside the 25, he's got a first down across the 24-yard line. Timeout on the field called by Arizona. We're going to check out what's happening with the Visa halftime report. For that, let's go to Kurt Menefee. Oh, wait. we got to get inside for the Visa halftime. Hey, I'll hit you at the desk. Coming up on the Visa halftime, Washington and Cincinnati go to extra time in London, and the Bills try to go for the season sweep against the Patriots. Hmm, nice throw, TB. It's coming up on the Visa halftime. How about Terry? He could fit that pass right through a doorway. Still thread the needle. <laughs> that was a long route. That took a long time. Must have had some good protection up front. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, Arizona doing what they wanted to do late here, trying to get something on the board. And they're closing in. Panthers, the 24-0 lead, their largest lead of the season. The Cardinals, as you see, their largest deficit. Ball at the Carolina 24. Carson Palmer being rushed. And he stepped up into trouble. Star Latulale was right there after there was pressure from the outside. And that, that's what we've seen here this game that we haven't really seen in the previous games from this front. It's the pressure from the outside. So you've got the pressure here and here. But then the push right here from Star Latulale and K1 Short. When you've got guys that can collapse the pocket from the outside but not allow the quarterback to step up because you've got those two big guys up front. You can see what A.Q. Shipley, the center for the Cardinals, was telling to us. These guys, not only are they big and strong, but they're athletic. You know, you, you can't move them around. Uh, they're very disciplined in the rush lane. So this, this has been by far the best I have seen the Carolina front play all season. And a look at Sean McDermott, the defensive coordinator of the Carolina Panthers. He's been sending his guys. Carolina with five sacks in the game. One timeout remaining for Arizona. Second and six. Palmer throws and completes it. To Britton Golden. What a nice catch by Britton Golden. Came up with some grass on the helmet. But Arizona with a first down at the 12-yard line. And he's they, down. They come right to the line, empty backfield. And now Ron Rivera was trying to call a timeout. The pass is completed to J.J. Nelson at the five. Ron Rivera had run down the sideline signaling for a timeout. Yeah, he wanted to extend that a little bit to get another look at that replay to see, but he'll be okay. Luke Keekley got that ball out late. With time flowing wide open in the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown by J.J. Nelson. Somebody somebody forgot about him. <laughs> yeah, somebody forgot about him. And there they are all talking. He's going to come out of the slot right here. But then I want you to watch the guys stand together. Everybody goes, nobody goes outside with J.J. Nelson. And Thomas Davis is standing there at the end of the play looking at the three guys like, when you had to go outside, you, you can't all come inside. What an impressive drive by Arizona in that situation. We, we talked about how important it was in that drive in a kind of a two-minute situation. It was about 2.40 left when they got the ball. Knew they'd get into that hurry up, and that seemed to kind of spark them a little bit. And you can never relax. I mean, the Carolina defense, boy, they played so well up until that possession. We showed you what they'd held to uh, Arizona to on the five previous possessions. So that's a that's a huge lift for Arizona getting ready to head into the locker room at halftime. Chandler Catanzaro with the extra point. It's right through. Arizona desperately needed that. 20 seconds to go on the half. They're on the board. Nine plays, 75 yards in two minutes, 25 seconds. And J.J. Nelson has his first touchdown of the season on the five-yard reception. And it's been a tough first half for Carson Palmer. You can see the little blood on the bridge of his nose right there. But getting with all his guys on the sideline, he saw him go through all the wide receivers. You know, getting with them already before they even get inside the locker room to hear from the coaches. Carolina will 
received the kickoff to start the second half right here at zero with the kickoff brought back from the goal line and a good return by Joe Webb that's the third string quarterback who's a great special teams player there's a flag on the play 12 seconds to go in the first half good return by Joe Webb and you'll have to see what the flag is right here, but does that change the thinking of Ron Rivera with only 12 seconds left with that return? Graham Gano's got a big leg. Offside, number 21 of the kicking team. That five-yard penalty will add into the end of the play. First down. Let's get an injury update from Laura Oakman along the sideline. Laura. Sam, the Panthers' offense is back on the field. Center Ryan Khalil is not. He has been in the locker room having his shoulder looked at. He is re His return is questionable. Unfortunately, his company, linebacker Shaq Thompson, also in the Panthers' locker room, questionable with a knee injury. Thanks, Laura. Gino Gratkowski remains in its center for Carolina. So what will the Panthers do with 12 seconds to go in the ball on their 42? Well, I, I think depending on what they would have done with that return, if they would have got pinned back and just taken in to win it half, but with the, the nice return and the penalty, you've got 12 seconds left. That's potentially two plays here. No, just going to let it be safe. Bossy Whitaker taken down. Fans don't like it, but the Carolina Panthers with a near-perfect first half. The perfection was spoiled late by Arizona's touchdown drive, but they've got a 24-7 lead at halftime. They'll get the ball to start the second half. And most impressive thing, dominating both lines of scrimmage in that first half. So Bruce Arians and his group got to make some adjustments at halftime. Here in Carolina, the rematch of the NFC Championship teams, and it's still going Carolina's way. 24-7, Panthers lead at halftime. We are back. Today's excitement is brought to you by the new Nissan Titan. Palmer being pressured, and it's carried into the end zone. Stewart carries into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. Stewart is hit. Barrels his way into the end zone. He would not be stopped. That was today's excitement brought to you by the new Nissan Titan. Look at the first half statistics. Arizona coming on late in the first half to uh, make some of the numbers respectable. But uh, the time of possession edge to Carolina. And the halftime score the same as the halftime score in the NFC Championship game. Yeah, uh, but we talked about the battle of the line of scrimmage. Carolina Panthers, four sacks. And that defense of uh, uh, the... Arizona Cardinals, which has been playing really, really well. No sacks. The kickoff deep and through the end zone. Take a look at the offensive leaders for the Carolina Panthers. Cam Newton, 8 for 13, 122 yards. He's also carried the ball a couple of times in the game four carries for 30 yards Jonathan Stewart and rushes for 30 yards and Kelvin Benjamin with one big catch of 50 yarder Panthers come to the line with Gino Gradkowski at center Ryan Khalil with an injury back in the locker room Back two receivers to the left and Stewart carrying good hold and continues to push forward for a couple of extra yards. We go to the sideline for an update from Laura Oakman. Hi Sam, I talked to a salty Bruce Arians who said to the guys at halftime, do your job. We're busting assignments we've been working on for 15 weeks now. Said that in terms of getting an offensive rhythm going, a little too late down 21 to get David Johnson going. Our biggest thing is protect the quarterback. Ron Rivera so happy with this pressure he's seeing that Daryl keeps talking about up front. Said this is finally showing what we are capable of. His message for the team, may Maintain energy, intensity on all sides of the ball. That's been one of the things that we've seen from this team in the uh, in the past is their old Simon gets looked at for the Arizona Cardinals, but getting out to these quick.
halftime first half starts and then kind of struggle a little bit in the second half. We saw in the playoffs yeah. both times last year, uh, you know, especially with Seattle there. So see if they've got that correct. But boy, they sure look good in the first half. That was a good start. Exactly what Ron Rivera had been preaching. They, you know, he talked to us about the loss of leadership on this team from last season and looking for some of the younger players to step up. You know, I think they have, and the bye week helps out. You know, it's funny how the bye week always seems to come at the perfect time for you, and I think it has for Carolina. It has an opportunity to get some guys healthy, to take a look at some things. They came back refreshed. You made the point. Ron said, I want you guys to get away from football for a while. They got away, but when they came back, they were ready to work again. Foster Stewart. Got a couple of blockers. Takes a couple of hits, but gets the first down. Boy, he's a tough runner. Both of these guys are. When you watch them both on film, Jonathan Stewart and David Johnson, they, they, they find some of the ugliest yards out there on the field. But you look up, and it's it's favorable down a distance because they're just so good at keeping their legs moving. They've got great balance and contact. First down at the 36. Three wide receivers in the game for Carolina. Olsen, the tight end, the fake, and the quick toss to Corey Brown had bounced. Corey, Philly Brown, he was at Ohio State, there were two Corey Browns. We think we've finally solved the mystery of why he's called Philly. Being from the Philadelphia area, Upper Darby, Pennsylvania, he was nicknamed Philly at Ohio State, and it's still with him. Sherlock Rosen. <laughs> Second and ten for the Panthers. Interesting what Laura said about Bruce Arians just telling his players, do your job. Don't look for excuses here. Newton back throws. Calvin Benjamin, what a grab. Covered by Patrick Peterson, the big wide out with a good catch. Going for the bottom of the screen here. Working up the field and then breaks to the inside. It's good coverage by Patrick Peterson, but it's a good throw by Cam Newton. 23 on the play to the Arizona 41-yard line. Brown shifts wide with Benjamin. Stewart hit in the backfield. Great play by Marcus Golden. And I'm, I'm expecting him to continue to grow and to play well during the course of this season. Now, th this is a guy who, in college, was a hand on the ground, 4-3 defensive end, and you get to the NFL, and they're going to transition you into a stand-up, more outside linebacker type guy. There's been some growing pains along the way for Marcus Golden, but he's really starting to show up on field for Arizona. He leads the team in sacks this season, and he was in there in a hurry on that last play. Newton throws off the back line, completes the 10th in junior. Pushed out of bounds inside the 35 to the 34 by Justin Bethel. Justin Bethel from not far from this Charlotte area, from the South Carolina area, went to Presbyterian. Not exactly a football factory, but they find players all over. And he's been a good one. Fozzie Whitaker in the backfield goes out. Newton hit him right in the numbers, but he dropped it. Big missed opportunity right there. Uh, that, that he's gonna he's gonna have some yards after the catch here as well. Working out of the backfield, working against Dayom Buchanan, a really really nice route, real good stop, change of direction. Just doesn't finish it with the catch. So now Graham Gano with a strong leg is out to attempt a 52-yard field goal. Andy Lee, the holder. J.J. Jansen, the long snapper. Eight one from 43 earlier. That was kick on the way, and it is good. And it cleared by plenty. 52-yarder for Graham Gano, and Carolina adds to the lead. It's 27 to seven. This game is sponsored by Southwest. Yes, dual fans with nothing to hide. That's transparency. By Chevrolet. More 2016 GD Power Dependability Awards than any other brand. And by Burger King. Now get 10 chicken nuggets for $1.49. Only at BK.
Those are great pumpkins. I may have had to take a couple of those home. Doesn't feel like late fall. That reminds me, I need to car of mine tonight, probably. Yeah. Right when I get home. That's it. 81 degrees. And again, I know that Bruce Arians would look at him as excuses, but physical game Sunday night, East Coast travel, early start, a little bit warmer than you anticipate. Those are all going to be considered excuses by Coach Arians. His guys need to get out here, put together a nice drive. Let's go down to the field to Laura Oakland and find out what's going on. Laura. I know Daryl talked about how Bruce Arians would not want to use heat or the physicality of last week as excuses, but let me just start with the heat because on the field it says 84, but that humidity, I tell you what my hair tells you, it's a lot hotter than that. But also watching Carson Palmer in that last series, he's been on the bike with an oxygen mask just trying to get his breath. Physicality, Larry Fitzgerald looks beat up. He ran the whole time he was on that sideline, Sam, trying to cut, trying to bounce on. Uh, trying to get uh, just comfortable. Thanks, Laura. Pardon us start from the 25. Almost jumping across was Thomas Davis. A lot of movement. 76. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Mike Cupati, the man who moved. Yeah, you come out and your defense gives up points on the opening possession, and you lose some time, and then your first snap is an offense. Pre-snap penalty. Now, Laura talked about the weather you did too, Daryl, but this is the team that comes from the warm weather. This is what they practice in. This is what they're used to. Well, I, I think more than the weather conditions today, it's, it's just the, the turnaround from Sunday night to, to Sunday here, physical game, all that. It's all, it, it doesn't matter. You, you go out and play the game. It, they, they are all excuses. Just go out and get your job done. David Johnson trying to find an opening. And he is shoved back. For short game, Johnson had six carries for six yards in the first half with three negative yardage carries and one no gain. Well, that's probably the most impressive thing that this Carolina defense has done. They have harassed Carson Palmer the entire first half, but look at that. Seven rushes, eight yards. I mean, he's only up to 25 total yards in the game. I mean, it, David Johnson is so impressive when you watch him on film. This Carolina defense has taken him out of this game. Empty backfield. Palmer gets some time, but nobody open. The ball's loose. And it looks like Arizona's recovered. Charles Johnson knocked the ball loose as he hit Carson, Carson Palmer. Charles Johnson coming from the left side, working against D.J. Humphreys. Going to beat him around the edge, come in and get the swat. Great job, not just going for the sack, but going for the turnover. D.J. Humphreys has had a tough, tough game thus far. And right tackle. He struggled a little bit against Cliff Averill on Sunday night as well. Carolina has now been credited with six sacks in the game. Carson Palmer fires too low for J.J. Nelson. And he was knocked down after he threw. That's a tough series. It started with a penalty, and it just kept getting worse. And again, it seems like almost every throw, there is contact on the quarterback. Obviously impacting that throw, unable to get it to J.J. Nelson. Was going to be a little bit short of the first down anyways. Third three and out in the game for Arizona. Ryan quickly back to punt. Good high kick. Fair catch way for by Ted Ging Jr. at the 43. Great field position for Carolina. They continue to dominate on both sides of the ball. This game is sponsored by Verizon. Join the better network because better matters. Back here in Charlotte. Carolina Panthers have a big lead. Good field position to start this next series. Arizona Cardinals have gone two games without giving up a touchdown. Panthers offense has scored two touchdowns in the game. And the defense won Newton plenty of time. Throws and connects with Ted Ken Jr. Out of bounds at the Cardinals 41, the first down. Well, Arizona plays a lot of man coverage, and there's Ted Ginn working against Justin Bethel. Gets him to turn his hips and then breaks to the outside. Easy throw catch. 
gain of 16 on the play. They split out Jonathan Stewart far to the right side. Now Stewart comes back into the backfield with Cam Newton and takes the hand off it. Breaks through. Grabbed from behind. He's still going. Wow. He is one tough back. We have said this throughout. He gets down to the 22, a 19-yard run. Great job up front again. We've talked about the way Carolina has dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides. That goes right up the middle. DJ Swearinger trying to rip that ball out to create a turnover. Look at the ball security. Look at the, the grip on that by Jonathan Stewart. Great fundamentals right there. Jonathan Stewart, 14 carries, 57 yards. First down Panthers at the Cardinals, 22. Colbert. Lines up in the slot. Newton puts it up for the corner for Benjamin. But he was covered very well by Patrick Peterson. Well, that was the matchup that we were going to see today. Patrick Peterson was going to travel with Kelvin Benjamin. There they are, locked together, the bottom of your screen. Again, watch Patrick Peterson. Look how he his head back to play the football. He stayed with him and kept backpedaling. <laughs> The top cornerbacks in the NFL, Patrick Peterson. Second and ten for Carolina. Cam Newton checking off. Newton, quick throw to Funches. And he dropped the ball. Did not hold on as he went to the ground. A heck of a throw puts it in a spot where only Devin Funches is going to get it, but he can't hold on to it. There's third and ten. Fourth drop of the game for Carolina. Negative in their game today. Colbert shifts into the backfield. Olsen is there as well. And Newton going outside for Ted Ginn. Was he inbounds? The referee rules, the official rules catch inside the 10. He was right along the sideline. Well, this is a great job working the sideline. It's a left foot down, drags the toe of the right foot with the possession, goes to the ground. Did that right foot get down inbounds. I think Bruce Arians is going to challenge the call. Saying that uh, that left foot might have been on the sideline. The challenge Arizona flag is out. And we'll find out in a moment. Ruling on the field is a catch. Tough uh, to overturn. Yeah, I think it's going to be hard pressed to find something that, that overturns the call on the field. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Now we've got the ability to kind of you know, zoom in on some of this so you see that foot go down right there and you zoom in and you know, that's about the best look we can give you and it's still just not clear enough to give you that overwhelming yeah. information of video proof that it uh, he can change that call. Again, the, the wording that the league is using is clear and obvious in order to overturn the ruling on the field. And certainly there wasn't anything clear and obvious there. What is clear now is Carolina's got a first and goal at the Arizona nine as they continue to drive. Stewart is in the slot. Cam Newton gets time. Looking, there's a flag down. He throws, throws it away, and then took a hit from Rodney Gunter, the defensive end. And we got a hat thrown down, which I think is substituting for the flag because I think Walt Coleman threw the uh, the original flag on the hold on Mike Remmers, and then I think he came in and threw his hat down for unnecessary roughness on the hit by Rodney Gunter on Cam Newton. We have fouls on both teams. Holding number 74 offense, personal foul, number 95 defense. 
Repeat. First down. First down. You, you just, you know, the contact is fine. Right now, Rodney Gunter, he gets him wrapped up. Just, just run with him. Don't take him to the ground. You just got a holding yeah. penalty called on the other team. You're going to push him back 10 yards. Gunter, a second-year man from Delaware State, goes to the sideline. So the offsetting penalties puts the ball back at the nine. And again, first and goal for Carolina. Stewart in the backfield with Cam Newton. Stewart on the carry. And he keeps pushing forward, gets down to the two-yard line. Seven-yard gain for Jonathan Stewart. I tell you what, he is so strong. Again, I, DJ Swearinger has put some of the biggest hits on over the last couple of weeks from that safety position for the Arizona Cardinals. Here he comes right in here. Watch this collision right there. And you can see the strength of Jonathan Stewart at the point of contact. On second and goal, it's Cam Newton, but he doesn't get there. No gain on the play. May have lost half a yard. They own Buchanan, the first man to make contact. Yeah, this, <laughs> this one didn't work out as well. It's a called quarterback run, but you've got Dayon Buchanan standing right in the hole. Nobody blocked him. <laughs> Swearinger coming in. If you're going to call the quarterback run, we got to pick some of these guys up. There's Swearinger. You've talked a lot about him. He's certainly an impressive player. James Betcher, the defensive coordinator. Third and goal for Carolina at the two. Newton throws. Was he hit it? Looks like he may have been hit as he threw. Calais Campbell. The big man got in on the other big man, Cam Newton. Yeah, and this is that, that new one this year. You know, the quarterback in the passing posture in the pocket you can't go down low he got wow, bent very yeah. awkwardly around that one that hurt he felt that one no flag on the play that's a rough little stretch for cam newton you had the foul by rodney gunter then you had the called quarterback run he's talking to walt right now to Man. walt coleman right now i mean that's one of the points of emphasis this year in the passing posture in the pocket you can't be down in that knee area and they will err on the side of safety for the quarterback. I'm surprised that there wasn't a flag there. Sets up a 21-yard field goal try for Graham Godot. And he is three for three in the game. Cam Newton on the sideline may be hurting a little bit. After that hit from Calais Campbell, he appeals to referee Walt Coleman. Meanwhile, Carolina's lead is 30 to 7. For Cam Newton, he's a target out there. Well, yeah, th there was discussion after the Denver game that he wasn't being protected. There was a couple of big hits in that game, right there. I mean, this this is a new this is a new point of emphasis this year. Quarterback in the pocket, in a passing posture, you cannot have forcible contact down around the knee area. We've seen a couple guys with hand swipes and things yeah. like that. That that's still legal, but you know, right, right there is another thing that Ron Rivera is going to be talking to the league about. Listen, my quarterback is not getting protected in the pocket. And that's one of the things that Cam talked to us about. You know, it's not when I run. You know, when you take the big hits, it's when you're passing from the pocket. The touchback in Arizona will start from the 25. Days are family and football. This season, Fox and the NFL are celebrating football families of all kinds and the incredible ways that game days bring families together. This week, we're featuring the Davis family who shared their Sunday football family story with us today. Today, the Davises experience their first ever Carolina Panthers game as a family, hosted by Fox and the NFL. There they are in the stands. Daryl had him up here showing him his, all his stuff. He put his headset on Evelyn, who's nine months old. How about you talking him through the whole thing at the beginning of the game with the game in London going to overtime enough? You know, we're, we're shifting to plan B here and Sam's talking him all the way through it. Yeah, everything's good. Everything's fine. We're just we're making some adjustments. <laughs> On first down, Palmer to David Johnson. Spins and gets up to the 34-yard line. Carolina's done a great job 
of making Arizona one-dimensional by taking the running game away. I didn't think they were going to be able to do that. I really didn't think they could take David Johnson completely out of this game plan. You know, running and catching, you know, he's, he's such a dual threat. Uh, I, I do need to see Arizona. I, you know, I don't want you to, you know, to start throwing the ball over the place, but you, you need a sense of urgency. We, we got to get up to the line of scrimmage a little bit quicker. And I, I'm surprised they're going back and huddling now. Carson Palmer throws outside, completes it to John Brown, to J.J. Nelson. Let's get an update from L.A. Kurt Benefee standing by. Kurt. Oakland at Tampa trying to go 5-0 and on the road this season of the Raiders. They scored 17 straight points to take the lead after being down 10-0. It's 17-10 in the third. Sam, DJ, and Laura. Thanks, Kurt. Oakland tied for first place in the AFC West. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they were in Jacksonville last Sunday, and now they go all the way back to Tampa Bay. So that's that's what I'm talking about when you know you use things as an excuse. That that's a tough travel schedule, and Oakland's finding a way to get it done. There's David Johnson. That's the running that we know this season from David Johnson. That's a nine-yard pickup. One of the things that. The offensive linemen love about David Johnson as well is, you know, the, the fact that he gets in behind him. He's not looking to bounce to the edge all the time. So, yeah, th that is that is what we've been waiting to see all day from him. He is really an exciting player to watch. But, boy, you know, hats off to the Carolina defense. They've, they've done a really nice job containing it. Britton Golden and John Brown. Wide receivers to the right, off the play fake, trouble for Carson Palmer. Seventh sack of the game for Carolina. Leonard Johnson in his first game of the season with a sack. But, you know, the strange thing is, is, you know, Leonard's going to come free, but Coney Ely's going to come free too. I mean, you, you don't have either one of those guys blocked. And Luke Keekley's on his way to the quarterback as well, so... Uh, you know, hats off to Sean McDermott, defensive coordinator for Carolina, what, what he's done today attacking the protections of the Arizona Cardinals. Wow. Leonard Johnson coming off the non-football injury list. Seven sacks, nine hits. Double-digit hurries outside to John Brown. He's got room down the sideline and gets down to the Carolina 40. Now this is such a hard play to defend because it's it's getting it to John Brown very quickly, but then you've got Britton Golden and Larry Fitzgerald as blockers down the field. Watch these two guys right here, what they do. Just a great job getting their guys onto the ground, kind of one of those quick screens out on the edge, but great blocking by the wide receivers of Arizona. 13-yard pickup. Fitzgerald and Nelson go to the left side. Gresham is the tight end to the left, Roma to the right. David Johnson looking to turn the corner, cut it back, and fights his way for an extra yard down to the 36. Kurt Coleman, the safety, in on the tackle. David Johnson, who in high school. He said for college he was being recruited as a wide receiver. He chose Northern Iowa. They moved him to running back. And since then he's become an outstanding back. Became a third round draft pick of Arizona. That's why he's so dangerous outside because of that wide receiver background. He, he knows how to run the routes from the wide receiver position. Here he comes outside right now. On second down. Palmer quick outside to David Johnson. Hangs up. Hurls one man. <laughs> out of bounds at the 22. Wow. That's spectacular. I right, just clipped this and put it for the year-end highlight tape. This is so impressive. So he's in the slide. He's got a blitz. He reads blitz. He's the hot adjust. It's got to come to you quick. We can't block everybody. And then I, and then you got to hop over. And then you got to start stop around Luke Keekley. And then push the pile for a couple more yards. They spotted at the 21, a gain of 14. Wow, that is such. That's so that's athletic. Correct. You can appreciate that. Oh, I couldn't even think of doing that. <laughs> First down at the 21. Ellington in the backfield replacing Johnson. Palmer with time going short to Larry Fitzgerald. And he's ridden down at the 17. 
Let's check in with Laura Oakman on the sideline. Laura. I talked to you last time about Larry Fitzgerald having trouble on the sideline. To no one's surprise, he's been in the game this whole drive, but that right foot of his has been bothering. In the last two series that he's been on the sideline, he has not been able to sit still. Athletic trainers have been looking at that right foot. Also, Tyron Matthew is out with that shoulder injury, Sam. Thanks, Laura. Second and seven for the Cardinals. Ellington splits out far to the right. Palmer turns and throws. It's off the hands of the tight end, Defani Moma. You got to snap that head around. When you run the flat routes, when you're running towards the sideline, as soon as you make your break, you got to get your head snapped around. So right now, around. Looks like he gets it. Maybe he just had trouble tracking it. A little bit low coming out of the break. in the game against Seattle last week for the, his first catches in the NFL. Here's a big third down play. Palmer gets time and protection and throws! And a touchdown to John Brown who was hit hard and held on. Great play by John Brown. What a great job by John Brown because he knows he's taking a big hit from Trey Boston on this catch you see him right there next to larry fitzgerald on the inside of that little stack going to push up get into the middle of the field and you can see trey boston closing on him great concentration get that ball covered up secured hold on for the touchdown first touchdown of the season for john brown and a big score for arizona if they have any hope of getting back in this game they needed something in a hurry and a good drive down the field. Extra point try here for Chandler Catanzaro. It's good. And Arizona down by 16. It's 30 to 14. A good touchdown drive. Carson Palmer was sharp on that drive. Small screen, stadium sized content. Watch live local Sunday games on your smartphone with NFL Mobile. Larry Fitzgerald, see him grimacing. He's walking up and down the sideline. He's caught six passes in the game. Tough to take him out. He he refuses to yeah, out. Tough to take him out because he's not gonna he's not gonna leave unless he absolutely have to feels that he just can't help the team anymore. Carson Palmer was sharp on that last drive, six for seven. It's just been in spurts today. Now they, they've had glimpses of the drive at the end of the first half, that drive there, but it just has not been consistent for Arizona during the course of the afternoon today. Kevin Zero's kickoff deep into the end zone. The touchback gives Carolina the ball at the 25-yard line. Cam Newton, 12 for 22, 184 yards. Has not thrown a touchdown pass in the game. Jonathan Stewart has a couple of touchdown runs in the game with 15 carries for 64 yards, but hard running. Yeah, but just important to get him underway. And, and Kelvin Benjamin doing a nice job, matched up against Patrick Peterson the majority of the afternoon and has had a couple of big catches. Carolina has scored on five of seven possessions in the game. Three field goals, two touchdowns. Newton with time, throws, and it's tipped away. Leaping defensive play by Deon Buchanan, who dropped back in coverage as the pass was intended for Greg Olson. And does a nice job. He's walked up all the way into the middle. You're going to see him bail out and trail right there. He comes into your pitcher, reads the eyes, goes back just, just beyond his outstretched hands. Cannon, first round draft pick in 2014. We talked about him earlier in his versatility. Second and ten. Stewart. Pushing, pushing, grinding those legs, getting up close to the 30 yard line. And yeah, it's Campbell on the stop. Sorry, Darrell. It's, it's, it's one of those things we see this season that, that seems to be true with a lot of the teams is the, the willingness of the offensive coordinator to run on second and longs. And, and when you've got guys like Jonathan Stewart and David Johnson, you know, it, it puts you to third and five and a half, six yards. It, that is it. That's a wide open playbook for Cam Newton in this situation. 
Stewart in the backfield with him. Philly Brown, number 10, motions. Newton looks right and throws, and it's broken up. Another good defensive play. This time it was Justin Bethel reaching in on the pass intended for Philly Brown. Really nice job by Justin Bethel. There's Philly Brown, number 10, going away in motion. Watch the man coverage, pushes him to the outside, gets back, gets that hand, and gets it knocked away. Again, we talked about it. Arizona plays a lot of man coverage underneath. Only the second three and out for Cam Newton and the Panthers. That's an important stop for Arizona late in the third quarter. They're trying to get back in this game. The punt by Andy Lee to the sideline and out of bounds. Carolina has been after Carson Palmer throughout the game. It's going to the back end with the majority of the season. You know, what's wrong with the back end in Carolina? Well, a lot of that had to do with the pressure up front. It arrived today. It came back today. I, they have just dominated the line of scrimmage against Arizona all afternoon. I mean, star Latulale has just been a force up front with three sacks. And Arizona's offensive line has really struggled. You can see how many times and what a tough afternoon it has been for Carson Palmer. Now Arizona with less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Two eight-point touchdowns. That could work. Short drop, quick pitch. Larry Fitzgerald with a catch. Showed you all those hits and sacks on Carson Palmer, and, and there's the guys who are responsible. Star Lotulale, just a, a great day today inside. Kwan Short, no no statistical presence, but boy, he's been a force yes. inside as well. Larry Fitzgerald has now moved into seventh place all time in receptions. For that catch moving past Reggie Wayne, 1,071 in his career. Palmer to J.J. Nelson. Good grab into Panthers territory. Arizona Cardinals trying to mount a comeback. They've been down all the way. As we end the third quarter, it's Carolina 30, Arizona 14, and Arizona on the move. Sam Rosen, Daryl Johnson, Laura Oakland, Oakland down here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Glad you're with us as we start the fourth quarter. Arizona trying to come back here, Daryl. Well, a nice little, uh, nice little spurt there at the end of the third quarter. Defense comes out, makes a quick three and out, gets the offense the ball back. Now they've gotten into Carolina territory here to start the fourth quarter. Carson Palmer. 22 for 29, 223 yards. Draw play to David Johnson. Flag on the play. Johnson with a good run inside the 35, but the flag's back at midfield. Holding, number 78, offense. 10-yard penalty, still first down. Right guard Earl Watford called for the hold that negates a good run by David Johnson. Yeah, I tell you what, Carson Palmer had a good view of this play and he was not happy there it is right there in the center of your screen I tell you what if you're gonna throw that flag you throw that flag every single snap of the game I mean he doesn't you know is is, is the defender starts to move away from him Earl Watford lets go and then chases him and resets himself I understand why Carson Palmer was not happy because as he handed the ball off he watched that play develop he went right to Walt Coleman after it and started to talk to him about that call Ball back to the Arizona 44, first and 20 for the Cardinals. Flag on the play. Swing it out to David Johnson. And a nice move. Picked up an extra five or six yards with that move. Back into Carolina territory, down to the 45. Here's the flag. Pointing at Arizona. Illegal formation on the offense. Number 68 was the end man on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's Jared Veldeer, the left tackle. And you can see he's confused. Yeah, and I think call. And I think Jermaine Gresham is saying that he was the end man on the line of scrimmage. So maybe it was he was not up on the line. There's Gresham here. 
I don't know, did, did the officials consider Gresham kind of in a wing there? Not sure about that. But the ball's back to the Arizona 39. This drive started on the Carolina 46. Palmer fakes, throws to Gresham, the tight end. He's pulled back. Forward progress at the 45-yard line. Luke Keekley with a stop. He's a fun guy to sit down and visit with. Uh, just a football player through and through. We see some guys out here that they kind of impress you with their athleticism, their size, a number of different things. I mean, he's just a straight-out football player. You, know, you can tell he loves the film room, loves the weight room, loves the, com the camaraderie of the locker room. He's all ball. Second and 19 at the 45. Baller steps up, throws, has a man. Good catch by Ellington. Andre Ellington out of the backfield. There's a flag on the play. Oh, Carson Palmer's upset. Illegal use of hands. And it just gave Carson one. Number 74, offense. And Carson's going to get a nice yeah. sportsman like The umpire threw his hat. A 27-yard pass play is wiped out. July conduct, number three, the offense. The 15-yard penalty will also be assessed. 15 yards. So the pass is wiped out. And then an extra 15 on Carson Palmer. I can, I can sense the frustration. DJ Humphreys, who gets called for hands to the face, doesn't like the call. Carson doesn't like the call. There's where he gets, he's going to get flagged right here. He hasn't been happy since the Earl Watford holding call. There's DJ Humphreys, number 74, hands to the face. He's up there, gets him off. You know, it's area, it's off. Now, Carson Palmer has to get his composure back because we've got the rule with those three varieties of penalties. You get two of those and you're out of the game. Nine penalties. 80 yards on Arizona. They're back to the 20 yard line. They have to go to the Carolina 36 for a first down. That pass is out of bounds incomplete. Third and 44. This drive started, or this series started, at the Carolina 46 yard line. And a lot of that has come on. I mean, the, the penalty yardage total, you've got, you've got two, you've got 30. With the, the series right there, 40 with the holding, 45 with the eagle formation. They got 45 yards in penalties wow. on this series alone. All nine Arizona penalties in the game are against the offense. Not a whole lot of plays for third and 44 in your no. offensive playbook. Palmer, short pass. Andre Ellington goes down across the 35 to the 36 yard line. And what looked like a good start to continuing this comeback try was wiped out by all the penalties. Now remember that that throw and catch to Andre Ellington. That had him down around the 30-yard line of Carolina. Ryan Quigley, sixth punt of the game. A little over 12 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Quickly, good, high punt taken to your wings for a fair catch at the 17-yard line. Frustration for Carson Palmer. He didn't like all the penalties called, and he got one, too. Today's game is sponsored by the new Volkswagen Golf All Track, soon to be everywhere. And by Casa Modelo, home of Especial Negra, quality beer since 1925. Just a great day of sports continues on Fox following this game. It's America's Game of the Week. Green Bay Packers and the Atlanta Falcons. That's a good one in Atlanta. We started with a game in London today. This game today, America's Game of the Week follows us and then the World Series tonight. What a day. You think Terry's going to make it all the way from 3 a.m. all the way through the World <laughs> Series game today? He's, little, he's a little ornery. He's got to take a little bit of a nap. The handoff to Jonathan Stewart. We saw the standings with Carolina at one and five, trying to come out of the bye week and 
really emulate what Kansas City did last year when they were one and five and, and it made the playoffs. And it's funny because Ron Rivera has that connection to Andy Reid back when they were together early on in their careers and he wanted to call Andy and talk to him but they play later this year so he didn't felt it was appropriate. So he went back and took a look at it and he said you could see all of a sudden that they started to play complimentary football just by the scores and what was happening and that was one of the big things we heard during the course of our visits on Friday. We've got to start playing better complimentary football. They have done that this afternoon. There's Stewart again. This time it's a short one. Short gain, maybe a yard on the play. 18 carries, 79 yards for Jonathan Stewart in the game with two touchdown runs. Well, Ron Rivera hasn't had a great record coming out of by. Never understand whether it's good or bad, uh, you know, the matchups certainly have something to do with it. And you got to look at what that season was at that time. Sometimes you've just had impacts on your team where it, it's kind of hard regardless of what the buy is, how you're going to perform that week. But I, I really liked his plan of having these guys just get away from football for the whole week. Yeah. Pressure on Cam Newton. He was hit as he threw. And the pass overthrown intended for Kelvin Benjamin. I haven't been around him very often today. Chandler Jones arriving, but you can see that's that's just half the duty when you get to Cam Newton. Okay, I got there, but what do I do now? <laughs> I mean, it's very Roethlisberg-esque in that when you got to Big Ben, you know, that was half the job. Now you got to get him to the ground, and that's Chandler Jones hitting Cam Newton. He's barely moving him off the spot. Chandler Jones coming in in a trade with New England. The fear man out of Syracuse has given the... Arizona Cardinals some good pass rush this season from the outside. They stop the play delay of game against Carolina. Delay of the game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Fifth penalty of the game for Carolina. Moves him back to the 23 yard line. Brings up a third and long. Have to get to the 37 yard line for a first down. Third and 14. The fake handoff, the quick outside to Tedkin Jr. And he's brought down on a good tackle by Pat by Marcus Cooper. That's a really nice job by Marcus Cooper because he had to come from a long way, find his way through a a bunch of traffic, and then he made a nice tackle at the point. Andy Lee is out to punt. Patrick Peterson, who in his rookie year had four punt returns for touchdowns, is back deep. He would love to return one here. Lee's kick, a long one. Back goes Peterson, has it at the 14. Looking to find some room. Not much there. Carolina's got it well covered. Late flag comes in around the 30-yard line. Well covered by Carolina. A pat on the back for Andy Lee on a 59-yard punt. During the kick, holding number 23 of the return team. The distance to the goal. First down. The penalty on Arizona sets them back some extra yards. Arizona had that tie with Seattle last Sunday night. And you see the standings. They're down two in the loss column. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes to four and three and four and two if uh, Arizona is able to knock home that field goal in overtime. Backed up here again, though, with more penalties. That, that's been their Achilles heel today. In the first half, they're getting beat down in the trenches. The second half, they're beating themselves with all these penalties. John Wetzel is in at left tackle for Arizona. Palmer on first down, dropping it off to David Johnson. And a good ankle tackle. Stopped Johnson from getting started. Leonard Johnson made the stop. They didn't get James Bradbury back coming out of the bye. Right. But I tell you what, Leonard Johnson has been a... A real nice addition to him this afternoon. He's played very well all day. Hurry up offense for Arizona. Palmer throws to Larry Fitzgerald. His eighth catch of the game. Fights his way up to the 19-yard line. The first down for the Cardinals. No huddle. They come to the line. 
We've talked about that right foot that's been bothering him. Hasn't been able to sit down on the sideline. Has to continually walk to keep it warm. Guy's just a warrior. There's Palmer on first down. Throwing and off to hands. A drop by J.J. Nelson. Catchable pass. Should have had it. So John Wetzel, a first-year man out of Boston College, is the left tackle now, replacing Jared Veldier for Arizona. Second and ten for the Cardinals. Fitzgerald makes the catch. A little short of the first down. Boy, that Fitzgerald continues. That that big gainers, a lot of short stuff, but he catches the football. All the dirty work. Nine catches, 63 yards. Palmer throws to J.J. Nelson. He holds on. He's out of bounds at the 34-yard line. And it's a first down for the Cardinals. Move the chains. Just over eight and a half minutes to go. A injured foot, hurting foot, no matter what, he's out there. He's had one drop in the game and nine catches. And feeling pain in that right foot. Baller blitz from the outside, gets rid of it. Catch by J.J. Nelson. He's out of bounds at the 43. J.J. with seven catches in the game, 75 yards, one touchdown. Work on the sideline. Both feet in. Just reach it. Just kind of stick it past and make sure you get had a first down there, too. You don't want to have something crazy happen now. Coming up just a bit short there on the catch. Second and one. David Johnson. Looks like he's got enough for the first down. Kyle Love was the first man to make contact with David Johnson. Time working against Bruce Arians. First down for the Cardinals. All receivers out. Palmer fires. Good grab by John Brown at the 40-yard line. Make it the 41 of Carolina. Browns had a couple of nice catches in this game. Now this is an area of the field that they thought they were going to be able to work. They really felt that Carolina would concentrate on getting everybody back deep and not allow anything over the top. They thought they could work that middle of the field. Timeout, Carolina. 7.06 to go here in the fourth quarter. Timeout, Carolina. We're going to check in with Carissa Thompson back in L.A. for a game break. Carissa. Hi, Sam. Let you, letting you guys know America's Game of the Week is coming up next. Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers on the road in Atlanta. And Matt Ryan's looking to get his team back on track after dropping their last two games. It's all coming up next. Sam, Daryl, and Laura. They're a, a similar dynamic to what we have here today. You really go back, you look at Air, uh, you look at Atlanta last week. Maybe not the physical confrontation that, that Arizona had, but, but mentally just had to be just so a 17 point lead lose that game in overtime on the fourth down how are they you know psychologically mentally coming right. into that game against green bay who had the week off so you've got another team kind of working through a tough a tough week going up against a team that had the bye week and the back-to-back -back good starts for atlanta yeah. they blew it last year and now they want to have that mental letdown Austin Palmer, pump fake, and he's taken down, and a flag comes in. K1 short took him down. Let's see what the flag is all about. Holding, number 76, offense, Hillis the climb. Second down. Mike Cupati was holding. It's another sack for Carolina. K1 short, he's the one guy that didn't have a sack yet. Gets upfield on Mikey Potty right away. That ties the most sacks in a game for any team. The Vikings had eight in a game against Carolina. Carolina now with eight in the game on Arizona. Palmer 
Throwing outside, and the catch is made by Britton Golden. Golden out of bounds at the 36-yard line. That'll bring up a third and five. And now we're talking about four down territory because Arizona needs to get on the board in a hurry. Three receivers left and two to the right. Four wide receivers in the game along with David Johnson. Here's Larry Fitzgerald. Nine catches already today. Palmer being rushed. Throws. It's off to hands incomplete. David Johnson jumped up for the ball. That pass may have been intended for J.J. Nelson five yards further down the field. Yeah, but they shouldn't be that close in tandem to have confusion like that. There they are stacked at the top. I think that's for David Johnson, yeah. and he just okay. has to go through his hands. The bad news is they had Larry Fitzgerald wide open to the left side, right at the sticks. I mean, he's going to probably get you about five yards beyond the first down marker, uncovered. Well, this is probably your ball game right here. 6.02 remaining, down by 16. It's fourth and five. Looks like Sean McDermott's bringing the pressure. And they whistle a timeout. Second. Second. Team timeout. Carolina. Carolina stops the play before the snap. And we were, want to remind you about all the great sports still to come. America's Game of the Week is next. And then Game 5 of the World Series. Chicago Cubs trying to stay alive. The Indians with a chance to close it out. And can Terry stay awake? Cubs That'll trying to stay alive. Terry trying to stay awake. We're going to check in. We're going to follow Terry. All right. Your thoughts here about the way Carolina has played this defensively this game and what they might come up with here. I, I would expect Sean McDermott, the way he just had that before the uh, timeout was called, to, to bring pressure on Carson Palmer. They've been getting home both ways, just with their down four and also adding a linebacker to safety. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them bring a, bring a bunch of blitzers here. Palmer goes empty backfield. Fourth down, quick outside David Johnson, and Johnson gets the first down. Breaks a tackle, keeps going, push forward down to the 15. You go to your best guy, and that's David Johnson. But I just, I love the wide receiver group of the Arizona Cardinals. They're so selfless. You know, they're placed down the field. Watch these two guys. We saw it earlier in the game. Now it's John Brown and Larry Fitzgerald's turn. Just a great job blocking. No huddle. And for a 21-yard game, Palmer couldn't find anybody. By his time, looks, goes short to Larry Fitzgerald, broke and tackle to the five and upended to the four-yard line. And every time I watch him, I become a bigger Larry Fitzgerald fan. <laughs> that guy's unbelievable. I mean, watch this. He's just going to lower his shoulder, leave his feet. Ten catches, 74 yards for Larry Fitzgerald. First and goal at the four-yard line. Palmer to the end zone. J.J. Nelson, touchdown! His second of the game! It's been a big day for J.J. Nelson. Looks like he's coming of age as a receiver for these Cardinals. Well, that was a little bit of concern of the health of the wide receiver group overall. John Brown getting his sickle cell situation figured out, made the trip. But, uh, yeah, they, they were very confident in their wide receiver group. Some young guys, but guys ready to take advantage of the opportunity. J.J. Nelson being one of those guys. And that's a great throw by Carson Palmer because he threads that between three defenders. Now down by 10, Carolina will go for two. With 5.01 remaining. Trying to get within one possession. Palmer throws deep in the end zone. No good. Broke it up. Leonard Johnson, another breakup. Big play. It continues to be a two-possession game. It's a 10-point Carolina lead. This game is sponsored by Microsoft Service, the official tablet of the NFL. Back in Carolina, 14-play drive, 92 yards. Carson Palmer for the game has passed for 342 yards and three touchdowns.
the numbers look good but they fell so far behind early in the game and he's earned it too because they have knocked him around all yeah. afternoon a little pooch kick on the kickoff it stays in bounds Tedkin fields it and carries it out of bounds wasn't what you would call an onside kick Carson Palmer JJ Nelson they've hooked up a couple of times today they just running the football inside the top. And when somebody tries to take that away from me, that's who I am. That's me. And that's going to forever be my edge in this league. That was Cam Newton earlier in the week talking about uh, his running the football. And he's carried the football today five times for 30 yards. See his passing numbers. And he's taken a couple of hits. And he holds on to the ball here on the quarterback draw. And he dives forward. Across the 35, just short of the first down. DJ Swearinger with a hit. Yeah, well, when you go head first, you're, you're going to be susceptible to the contact. We've talked about him getting down low, but you know, you're still going to take that hit right there. That one is from DJ Swearinger. Watch Cam Newton in practice. He's always, when he's not throwing the football, he's always stretching. They're always working him out, stretching the legs, stretching the arm. Big man, quite an athlete. Second, less than a yard for Carolina. With the clock moving. Jonathan Stewart gets the first down. We check in with Laura Oakman along the sideline. Laura. Continuing what you said about Cam as a man and an athlete, Sam. He's the first one to tell you how much he's grown and how much he's still growing. He spends a lot of time talking to people in and out of sports about their journeys, asking for advice. He flew to San Francisco just to meet with Apple CEO Tim Cook this offseason to pick his brain. Players and coaches will tell you they've never been around a guy who wants to win so badly. He just manifested differently and is still learning to manage it. Ron Rivera said he reminds him of three people, Brian Urlacher, Philip Rivers, and Jim McMahon on the field, how badly he wants to win. Thanks, Laura. We welcome all of you who've been watching other games to Carolina. This is Jonathan Stewart carrying on first down. They tried to rip the ball out, and they did. Tony Jefferson ripped the ball out, and it's Arizona ball on the turnover. A huge play with Arizona down by 10 here. That's very surprising because we saw Jonathan Stewart in a situation similar to this early in the game with DJ Swearinger right there, the guy who's making contact, trying to rip it out. And Jonathan Stewart, with great ball security, was able to hold on. Here comes Tony Jefferson, 22. At some point, you just need to get down, right? You just, let's convert. Let's take care of the football. We've got a lead. And Stewart not hitting the ground. Did, did the ball come out first? That is being checked, being reviewed on the change Previous of possession. Will be reviewed. All right. So the referee, Walt Coleman, is going to go under the hood and check it out. See exactly what happened. Confirm the play. Carolina leading Arizona 30 to 20. The play being reviewed on the possible turnover. Mike Pereira is with us as always. Mike, what do you see here? Sam, I think the ball is starting to come out just before the knee has hit the ground. And as we've seen a lot of these plays through the course of this season, they have been staying with the calls when you can't tell quite for sure. But I think just before the knee gets down, the ball is starting to roll out. I think they stay with the call. All right. So Tony Jefferson with a big play as Arizona needs two scores here. Jonathan Stewart will be upset with himself. Not, you know, missing the what's going on in the game right now. It, it, fighting for that extra yard is is not as important as maintaining possession. So being situationally aware of where the game is right now, and, and he has run hard all day long. He's a huge part to this offense, uh, and it's kind of that that running style that kind of feeds this offense. But being situationally aware in the time of the game and, and what the priority is. The priority right now is possessing the ball and killing that clock. And at some point, you just got to get down. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the fan field stands as called. First right. down, Arizona. The turnover gives the Cardinals the ball down by 10. 
It was 24 to 7 in favor of Carolina at halftime. They increased that lead. And Arizona mounting a comeback, scoring a touchdown. To get it to down by 16, scored another touchdown to cut it to 10, but missed the two point conversion try. Now on first down, Carson Palmer pressured. And the ball back away and intercepted by Cody Ely. He was down at the 44, but what a play by the defensive end, Cody Ely. Uh, just tremendous athleticism by Coney Ely. And kind of fitting that it's somebody from that defensive line that makes the huge play at the end of the game. He's going to come from the left side, number 94. Loops around, hits him square in the chest. <laughs> Able to make the interception, but th this defensive line has been so good all afternoon. It's just, it's just fitting that they're the group that kind of seals this game up for Carolina. Panthers have had eight sacks in the game, five by defensive linemen. And this time, Cody Ely with a great play. So, with just a little over three minutes remaining, Carolina with the ball at the Arizona 44-yard line. First career interception for Cody Ely, the third-year defensive end out of Missouri. Jonathan Stewart has had a strong game despite losing the ball the last time gets down to the 35 yard line Stewart with 21 carries 93 yards and two touchdowns that's a good day's work that's a great day's work and that's with the focus of, of coach Betcher and his defense all aware of, of how important Jonathan Stewart has been in these games that they played the last couple of years they had to stop Jonathan Stewart they could not let the rushing game be a factor today but Carolina's run game is so diverse and so hard to defend. Clock running. Arizona has two timeouts remaining. Stewart, nothing there. As he is stopped short of the first down. Loss of a yard. But the play that everybody's going to be talking about around the water cooler tomorrow, Sam, is this play early on in the game. The first touchdown by Carolina. We thought that that was... An attempted pass, and it should have been ruled incomplete on the field. No whistle blown. Thomas Davis scoops it up, takes it back for a touchdown. 7 0 Carolina. They push that all the way out to 21 0. And uh, that, that's going to be the play that everybody talks about. This crew kept it as a fumble. We felt it was, uh, there was, there was visual evidence, clear and obvious, that that was uh, an attempted pass forward by Carson Palmer. Palmer's numbers. The other big number is he was sacked eight times. Hurried many times in the game. But again, it, it, I love the way that this game played out by Carolina because, you know, the, the game today is about matchups and it's it's perimeter-based football and we're down the field with vertical passing. Carolina won this game today inside, in the trenches, against the Arizona Cardinals who are very, very good on both sides of the ball in their offensive and defensive lines. Arizona 2-0-1 in their last three games coming into this one, including the 6-6 tie last Sunday night. Timeout called, and we'll be right back. Third and two for Carolina at the Arizona 36-yard line. And Newton, Jonathan Stewart, first down Carolina, a whole lot more. Stewart inside the 15, down to the 11-yard line. Boy, he means so much to the offense. I know you've talked about it a couple of times, Darrell. Yeah, but I'm going to compliment Mike Shula on this play call right here. You know, you don't run it and just stuff it in the middle there. You run a pass, a safe pass. Comes up with a big play. Should be able to wind this thing down here. Two-minute warning. Carolina with a 10-point lead. This game on Fox is sponsored by Lowe's. Two minutes remaining as Carolina trying to win their second game of the season. Got off to the big start. 14-0 lead in the first quarter. 24-7 at halftime. Cardinals tried to come back. Got within 10. And that's where we are now with two minutes to go. 
The ball at the Arizona 11. Cam Newton still has it. For the five, he, sl he slid. He slid. <laughs> I think that's number five. What a offensive coordinator Mike Schultz said he, he thinks he'll recall four. <laughs> Timeout. Arizona. Second down and six for Carolina. Cam Newton looked like he was hurting a little bit from that slide. Not used to sliding. As two backs actually has a tight end Ed Dixon in the backfield with him. Jonathan Stewart has dropped for a loss. And it was funny because he made the comment, you know, Mike Shula, the coordinator, told us, he goes, I don't think Cam played baseball because he just doesn't slide real well. And there's some evidence yeah. coming right there. And then after that, he's like, ah, something doesn't feel quite right. I should have just gone head first on that. Best news for Arizona today is that Seattle lost in New Orleans. New Orleans beating the Seahawks 25 to 20. So Seattle goes to 4 2 and 1. Arizona about to go 3 4 and 1. Arizona will have a bye next week. There's Jonathan Stewart, big hole. He blasts inside the five and down to the three with a minute to go in the game. Arizona out of timeouts. Long trip for the Cardinals after the tough game last week. Don't forget America's Game of the Week coming up next. Green Bay Packers at the Atlanta Falcons. That's a game that Carolina will be watching. Fourth and goal. Excuse me. Fourth and two at the three-yard line. And running straight into the line was Jonathan Stewart. And the ball goes over to Arizona with 20 seconds to go. And we go to Carissa Thompson for a game break. Thanks, Carissa. Sam. Oakland at Tampa Bay. Janikowski's going to miss this 50-yard field goal, so they headed to overtime. The Raiders started with the ball, and now they're in field goal range. And don't forget, the Packers and the Falcons are next. It's America's Game of the Week right here on Fox. Sam. Thanks, Carissa. We're seeing a lot of these overtimes earlier today in London. We started the great day on Fox with Washington and Cincinnati playing a 27-27 tie. And now we've got Oakland and Tampa Bay going over time. Ten point lead, 20 seconds to go. Some Palmer throwing and completing to David Johnson. Johnson is brought down at the 25 yard line as the final seconds wind off the clock. Carolina with the win comes out of the bye and Carolina now two and five Arizona goes into their bye three four and one Kurt Benefee is standing by preceding the game of the week and then the World Series tonight let's go to Kurt